It's one of Britain's most successful online brands, transforming the luxury fashion market and turning its owner into a multimillionaire. But net -porte, the company behind that success, has been paying just a fraction of the tax that you'd expect, using perfectly legal mechanisms which transform profits into a loss. It's not the only company which is managing to minimise its taxes, but after the government pledged to crack down on loopholes, why is it still going on? Hele Ibrahimi has this special report. Netaporte, a British company that has brought online shopping to the world of high fashion, a business idea that's now a near half a billion pound a year success story. It's the creation of Natalie Massenet, seen here on the left, an American who's built a fast-growing tech company employing 1,600 people in the UK, a glamorous cocktail of glitz and clicks. One of the country's most celebrated entrepreneurs, she's now president of the British Fashion Council, going to Downing Street to talk up the industry's benefits. But, like far too many companies, questions are now being asked about how net porte accounts for its financial success and whether the tax authorities are being tough enough. You may think that a company that makes £435 million in sales will make a decent profit. But in fact, net porte makes a loss, quite a big one. And it does that in part by the way that it chooses to pay its most senior executives. And what these accounts show is that it's also able to use losses it makes now to reduce its future tax bill. I've spoken to tax experts who say from these accounts it's very difficult to see what's really going on. So in this particular company's case, we don't know where it's making its profits, we don't know where it's paying its tax, we don't actually even know it's paying its tax because there is no cash flow statement in these accounts because there's a Swiss parent company which means mm. it doesn't have to include that information in here to tell us if this tax which it says it owes is even being passed over to the revenue. And so it's not clear, there are significant questions that are raised but just by looking at these accounts. Yeah, frankly, I can raise very many more questions on these accounts than I can provide you with answers. We're still living in a world where there's an enormous amount of opacity which a company like this can exploit to leave us in doubt about what's going on in these accounts. Here's how the company takes profits away. It had a turnover of £435 million in the year ending March 2013. It would make a profit of £6.5 million after allowing for all the costs of doing business. But it deducts a share-based payment charge of more than £31 million, leaving it with a loss of over £24 million. That figure also includes a £30 million charge in 2013 by its Swiss parent company Richemont in related party transactions, made up from an opaque £9.5 million management fee, Again, the charges contributed to the company's loss. When you look at these numbers, what's clear is that it's that share-based payment scheme that's tipping Net-A-Porter into a loss. We know that it's going to senior executives. One in particular is described in the accounts, though not named. Now, these schemes, they're not illegal, but they have attracted controversy elsewhere because essentially they are shielding very high paid employees from paying much income tax. Now, we can't see that happening in Net-A-Porter's account, but what we can see is that it's benefiting the company. Any company accounts is at least in part a matter of judgment by both the directors and its auditors, and there's no suggestion that Net-A-Porter is doing anything against the law. The issue is what is allowed within the law, and whether it is too easy for companies to avoid tax, and whether HMRC needs to be doing more. The loss is important because it generates a tax credit of £3.2 million, which can be used to offset future taxes. And the company's accounts show a very similar pattern in the year before. Again, a share payment of nearly £30 million, again a loss, and again a tax credit. Some critics believe this is legal but not acceptable, and the company should be paying more tax. I think it stinks. I think that this company are getting away with not paying what they should be paying and I think HMRC should pull their finger out, they should have a look at exactly how this system works and the HMRC 
in my experience, a little bit too easy on big companies with lots of money. They're not so easy on individuals who struggle to pay their tax bills. That's a different story. But when it comes to big companies worth billions, or tens of millions in this case, they're a little bit too easy going. In a statement, Netaporte and its parent group, Richmon, told us their accounts fully reflect the company's business within the UK. The Netaporte group is fully liable for UK corporation tax on the results of these UK operations. The Netaporte Group Limited is not a publicly listed company, and its parent, Richmon, does not comment on the financial performance of individual businesses within the group. Fashion is big business. That's the message Natalie Massonet has been keen to put forward, not least to the government. What's particularly awkward for Netta Porte and for Natalie Massonet is that when the British Fashion Council talks about contribution of the industry to the economy, it specifically mentions the contribution to the Exchequer, including corporation tax. But there is increasing frustration about whether Treasury, and in particular HMRC, is doing enough to make sure that companies are paying their taxes within the spirit of the law as well as within the letter. This type of efficient tax buying is not unique to Net-A-Porte, but as the attacks against Starbucks, Google and Amazon show, the public has lost its patience with rich people and companies that are able to legitimately plan their way out of paying taxes. The Swiss company Richemont, owner of many luxury brands, took over net in 2010. The share-based payment plan came into effect after that and by 2015 will pay out £150 million to just 14 executives. A crackdown on corporate tax affairs is already underway. The question is, is it happening fast enough? At September's G20 meeting, the OECD is expected to outline radical new plans to stop multinationals from shifting profits and to force companies to be more transparent about exactly where they do make profits and where they pay tax. However, countries would have to agree to this and many of them, including the UK, are ironically making corporate tax rates lower in order to compete for business. In terms of income tax, just last month the Treasury launched a consultation on share-based payment schemes, similar to the one at net porte They're putting them under the microscope to see whether such remuneration packages are actually justified. The more complex a tax system is, and the tax system is more complex now than it was 15 years ago, the more likely it is there will be opportunities for tax avoidance. And probably when you introduce uh, measures to close loopholes, you create opportunities for other loopholes. So what's needed is a remorseless drive to simplify the tax system. That's a big job. It should be very high on the agenda for the next parliament, whoever wins the next election. Uh, it'll be tough, uh, but it must be done. And in the meantime, we must make sure that HMRC collect the right amount of tax according to the current law from everybody operating in the market. In her open letter when she took the helm of the British Fashion Council, Natalie Massonet said that British fashion was a serious business, that its financial contribution to the UK economy and its reputation were both set to rise. That's all very well, but from the public's perspective, tax payment carve-outs, whether ethical or not, are simply not a good look. And that report by Helia Ebrahimi, CNBC UK business editor. Well, our economics editor, Paul Mason, is here. Paul, give us some sort of context. How does this fit in with the other tax controversies? Well, tax avoidance, of course, is not illegal. Many companies do it. Um, and I think that one of the easiest ways to avoid paying tax, of course, is to not make any profit. And this is what stands at the heart of many aggressive tax avoidance schemes. If we take, for example, Amazon, its uh, estimated sales here in Britain, 4.3 billion a year. Um, it's tax paid 4.2 million, so an effective tax rate of 0.1%. Uh, that's done by, and the clue is on the box when you get your book, <laughs> yeah. it's Luxembourg. It's all sold yeah. via Luxembourg, which of course has a different tax regime. 
lower than us. Uh, you look at Apple, uh, estimated, they don't report it themselves, 10 billion sales here, again, about 11 million paid in tax, and that's, again, at about 0.1% effective tax rate. And that's done by funneling sales through Ireland, which has a more lax tax regime, and when the Irish authorities looked at some of those companies, they're based offshore and even hard to find where they're supposed to be based. The crucial thing, of course, these companies all say this is legal, we're, do, we're mm. representing our shareholders, we're getting the best for ourselves. The crucial thing in all three, all examples, is national governments, a global system, and then countries prepared to revel in the role of being tax havens. Okay, but this is the point, isn't it? The British government has been telling us, like others, that they're doing an awful lot about this. What are they actually doing about well, it? The British government pushed for a, um, the, the more aggressive regime that Helia talked about there via the G20, and the OECD is now implementing that. The companies are pushing back against it. I think more acute is the European Union, the European Commission's uh, investigation into some big companies. They're investigating Apple, Fiat, Starbucks, and likely to rope in Amazon, Google, and McDonald's. Uh, they're going to lose aggressively at these regimes. The only thing is, and this does almost sound like a comedy sketch, that the man in charge of the European Commission, as of last month, that's doing this aggressive investigation, is the very man who was Prime Minister of Luxembourg, the main <laughs> tax haven. Paul Mason, Economics Editor, thanks very much.